Okay, so the first thing we want to do is look at our steps, and our first step says that we need to convert our whole number to a fraction. Then we'll multiply, and then we're going to simplify if necessary. So let's have a look at what that will look like then. My first example says 3 multiplied by 1 quarter. So at the moment this looks very tricky to do because we have a whole number and we have a fraction. And they don't multiply very easily, so what we need to do, follow step 1, and we're going to convert the whole number to a fraction. So we're going to be using something called equivalent fractions. If you're not too sure what an equivalent fraction is, I'm going to put a link to a video here for you to, to fully understand that before going too far with this. But basically, we can represent this 3 as a fraction form by putting just 3 over 1. Because if we think about what this improper fraction now represents, it's representing that our denominator, the number on the bottom, is representing holes. And how many do we have? Our numerator shows that we have three holes, which is the same as saying three. Now that we've converted our whole number to a fraction, we can just put our multiplication sign and the other fraction, which was one quarter. Now we're going to follow step two, multiply. And all we're going to do is we're going to multiply our numerators, the top number. So three multiplied by one is three. And then all I do is multiply my denominator, my bottom number, and 1 multiplied by 4 is 4. And it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, with this first example, because 3 multiplied by 1 quarter, so 3 times 1 quarter, will end up with 3 quarters. OK, let's have a look at another one then. Let's have a look at 4 multiplied by 3 quarters. And again, first things first, I need to find an equivalent fraction to this whole number. So I can represent my 4 as just saying 4 over 1. Again, if you're not sure exactly why I'm doing this, please make sure you watch the equivalent fraction video because that is really going to explain that clearer. But essentially, 4 over 1 is equivalent to just saying 4, but in a fraction form. And we need two fractions now while we're multiplying. And stage 2 says to multiply. So again, I'm going to multiply my numerators. 4 times 3 is 12. And 1 times 4 is 4. What you're going to see here is that we now have what's called an improper fraction. Our numerator is greater than our denominator. So we call this an improper fraction. And really, we don't want to leave it as an improper fraction, so we're going to turn it into a mixed number. And again, I have a video for you for converting between an improper to a whole number. But what we're essentially doing is looking at our denominator and seeing that we're splitting our fraction into fours. So then I'll look now at my numerator and work out, well, how many fours go into my numerator? How many fours are there in 12? And in this example, there's actually a whole three with no fraction remaining. So my answer to four multiplied by three quarters is three. OK, let's get to a bit of an orange chili challenge then. And let's have a look at seven multiplied by three sixths. So exactly the same process. I'm going to turn my seven into a fraction by putting it seven over one and still multiply it by my three sixths. Step two, multiply. So 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. And 1 multiplied by 6 is 6. Again, I have an improper fraction here. So using the same method and same understanding, I'm trying to work out how many groups of 6 I have in the 21. So how many holes do I have? So if I go up in my 6 times table, 6, 18, 24. Well, I can't get to 24, so I have 6, 18, which is 2. So I have 2 holes. And then how many left over between 18 and 21 would be 3. And they're still valued at a sixth. So my mixed number would be 2 and 3 sixths. Like I say, if you're not too sure on this converting between improper fraction and mixed number, I'll link that video again. Right, let's look at our last one. 5 times 8 sevenths. So 5 again can be represented by 5 over 1 times 8 sevenths. First job. Multiply the numerators, 5 times 8 is 40. Then multiply the denominators, 1 times 7 is 7. So I'm left with another improper. So I'm asking myself, how many 7s are there in 40? Well, I can get to 35 with 5 groups. So I'm going to have 5 holes. But I only got to 35, so how many have I got left over? I've got 5, because I needed to get to 40. So I've got 5 7s remaining. And that would be my answer. 5 and 5 sevenths. OK, there you go. Let's look at the things to remember. First, we must turn the whole number into a fraction. Then we must multiply the numerators, then the denominators. 
and then if we need to, we're going to convert the mixed number if we needed. Okay, here are four questions for you to have a little look at. Have a go at answering these and put your answers into the comment section. You can check with everyone else is in there and I'll try and mark as many as possible. There we go, guys. Hopefully this video has been useful. If it has, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. It really helps me. And check out my website, www.themathsguide.com. But for now, peace out.